Now, I'm going to get you to humour me for just one minute. I am, after all, an academic. And, and we're going to get a little, not a lot, just for a moment, a little academic, because I want to explain to you just one really important principle about research methods. Some of you are thinking, oh my goodness, can we just skip this? But don't. It's actually really important and will, and will make your life easier when it comes to evaluating your research. So there are two basic camps, two basic categories of research method. Um, one is the qualitative. Now, the qualitative approach is focused on stories, okay? You may have heard this before, but basically the qualitative approach says what we want to know is about people's experience. We want to know what it's like to have a mental health illness. We want to know what it's like to turn up to this event. We want to understand how people felt when they moved through our art exhibition, all of that kind of stuff. So qualitative gives us this really, really rich information about the experience, right? And it's really useful. It's really useful for evaluation. It's really useful for understanding the dynamics of what's going on in um, a project, okay? And you will end up using, and I would recommend that you end up using qualitative research. Now, the other side, and it is a little bit among uh, researchers, a case of the other side, but the re reality is they go hand in hand, is we've got the quantitative. Oh. Now you guessed it, the quantitative is all about the numbers. To be quite honest, the quantitative researcher doesn't really care about the story. Like we do, don't get me wrong, but really when it comes to doing research, and this is a lot of the research that I do, I've done qualitative research, but a lot of the research that I do, we use numbers. Now. Where the stories give us a real richness, what the numbers do is they give us, they give us a way of comparing, right? So both of these methods are trying to understand the world. We use these re research methods as research methods all the time, and you're going to need to use them to evaluate your project. Now, they both are trying to understand what's going on, but they just have different approaches and they have different strengths. Now, what quantitative research is good for is comparing, you know, so if I'm saying I'm running a youth event and I'm getting 100 teenagers and I'm spending $200 and then another town of the equivalent size, they're spending $200 on their marketing and they're only getting 20 teenagers, well, then we can go, hmm, I'm doing really well here. But we can also compare it to the first time I ran the event. I had this number of people, or they stayed for this long, um, and then these are the outcomes, right? And then we can compare it before and after. So when you're thinking about your evaluation strategy, and we're going to get to a couple of examples in a minute, think about whether you're trying to find out the, the story, are you trying to find out the story, or are you trying to find out kind of the, you know, the more numbers, the more outcomes based stuff? Okay, and then that kind of helps you as to which direction you go into. Now, if we're thinking about qualitative, there's a number of approaches to qualitative, but really it's about how do we get people to talk or write or discuss their ideas. There are all sorts of different approaches and you can probably come up with some new ones, but just some quick ideas are things like, um, what have we got? Let's go, so we've got the simple ones of interview, focus groups. So an interview is where you arrange to sit one-on-one -on -one with, um, with a person and ask them about their experience. What was it like to have um, to be involved in the art competition? You know, how did, did you feel empowered? Did you feel scared? Why? Why not? You're not, you know, you're kind of asking for that richness. You're allowing people to tell stories. Now, one-on-one -on -one is brilliant in, the, in that it's really simple to arrange. You just arrange to have a cup of coffee with someone um, and set up your questions beforehand. Um, but it takes a long time because you need to do more than one interview. You need to do a whole series of interviews so that you know that, yep, we've got lots of people coming to us talking about this same story, therefore it must be true, okay? You can't just do an interview and find out that one person said that you were the most amazing person in the world, therefore you must be. You need 20 people to say the same thing. Then, of course, it's true, okay? So focus groups is a way of, I guess, 
facilitating a conversation. So this can be particularly useful if you've run some, I don't know, some training and a group of people have gotten through it to get them into a room over pizza or whatever and get them to talk about their experience. What was it like turning up? Did you feel nervous? What was going on? And encourage a conversation as much between the members of that group as with you, okay? So those two approaches are really good. And if you've done a, um, a prototype, then it would pay, if you can, to grab some of the people who are involved in the prototype and get them to discuss the outcomes. And remember, you keep coming back to what your objectives are. You're trying to evaluate according to your objectives. So use that as your questions. Another approach is obviously um, surveys. Now, later on, um, I've talked about you know, approaches to surveys, but basically you can use surveys on both sides. And we'll talk about how to do this um, in quantitative a minute, but surveys on the qualitative side, you would basically pose a question, an open-ended question, which is a question that can't be answered with a yes or a no. Tell me about your experience or how you decided, what was going on in your head when you decided to come to this event, okay? What was your experience while you were there? Really open-ended questions. Now, you're not going to get the same richness in a survey open-ended question as you would in an interview or a focus group because you're not there to kind of coax the information out of them, but it can be a really good way to get some qualitative information from lots of people because it's very easy, okay? So surveys can be really good for that. There are other things like um, photos. So it's all just a way of eliciting people's stories. So, you know, one option can be, and I, I've seen this done before, where, where they say, okay, here, take your camera around and take a photo of the most exciting thing and explain why it's the most exciting thing. So you can use all sorts of different methods, but it's basically a way of squeezing stories out of people, okay? Qualitative, really, really important, particularly, I would argue, in the development stage where you're trying to work out how can we improve this, how can we make it work more. Now, quantitative... Um, usually comes down to surveys or observation. So obviously quantitative method would be to kind of um, count how many people came through the door, how many sausages you sold, all of that kind of thing. But the other approach to quantitative, um, and it's called a, a Leichhardt scale. I only put that there so that you can kind of Google it later. Don't worry about remembering it. But basically it ask a question, um, remembering that we're looking for a very specific answer because we're numbers based. And, and it might be, uh, let's just go, how much do you love me? Right, and then we're going to rate that all the way from, from one equals not at all, devastating, all the way through to seven. Okay, we usually run Leichhardt scales through to seven, which is um, madly, madly in love, right? And then you have kind of points in between I don't know whether I've made seven points. Yep, made seven points there. And then this is kind of neither. Now you can ask a series of questions, and we do this in research all the time, a series of questions about your event or your project. Um, how much fun did you have? None at all through to best fun of my life. Um, but make sure that you kind of use a, you know, something that's nice and consistent. And if you Google Leichhardt scale um, examples, you'll find a gazillion of them. We use this stuff in research all the time. So Leichhardt scales, what they'll do, particularly if you can apply the same set of questions to a series of events or a repeat event, is you'll be able to compare. So you might have um, 10 questions, and then the total score, they might all be positive things, you know, how good was it in this way, how good was it in this way, how good was it in this way, and then the total score gives you an indication and you can compare that to other events. Um, so, Leichhardt scales are really useful for capturing that information really quickly. They don't give you the depth of this, but they do give you the richness. Now, what I would say is that when you're creating your um, questions, you need to make sure that they all relate to your goal, okay? And creating these can be a little bit tricky, um, as in researchers find it a little bit tricky. So keep it really simple. Another really simple approach that I've seen used, um, particularly with kids, is to use smiley faces. You know, so kind of all the way through, I don't know what the, the in-between ones are, um, you know, and think about what, you, what you're wanting to know. You know, is it, were you asking about um, fun? How much fun was it? Were you asking about usefulness? 
Um, simplicity. So really think carefully about what you want to know. So when we evaluate at university in terms of, or when I evaluate at university in terms of education, I always talk about usefulness and enjoyment, right? Because at university, it's all well and good. It's nice if you enjoy the course. Um, I would hope that you enjoy this course, but that, while that's lovely, I'm not a sitcom. So I actually want it to be useful, right? So think carefully about what you're trying to, what you're trying to evaluate. Now, the final thing that I would say is be a little conservative when you're evaluating an event. I know that what you want to find out is that you're amazing and you've just changed the world. So be aware of that bias. You know, I've created events and I thought, oh, that was brilliant. And then I look at the, the data and I'm like, oh, surely those, that data is not correct. Okay, so be aware of your own bias and be conservative. There's a couple of ways to be conservative. One is to make sure that you frame your questions really, really clearly. Um, so rather than saying, tell me about the fun that you had at my fun event, um, say, tell me about your experience, okay? The other thing you can do is actually get someone else to do that. So particularly if you're in a small town and everybody knows exactly who you are, it really pays to get an outsider to say, okay, tell me about that experience. What was it like? So that the person feels comfortable saying, you know what, I actually felt really uncomfortable. Okay, so you need to make sure that you're kind of honest in your approach. The other thing is that just because you get a 99 out of 100 on your amazingness score doesn't mean you're amazing because the reality is that you don't have anything to compare it to until you've done it the second time. So take it with a grain of salt. Don't get me wrong, it probably was amazing, but you don't know what a 99 means until you compare it to something else. Okay, the other thing that you can do is think about the... Um, your strategy of evaluation. And so you might have a survey evaluating the usefulness of some training, right? And then you might do an interview exploring the usefulness. But then finally, you might do some observation of skill development. So if your program, if your project was about running training for young people, you would expect that they would believe that it was useful. So when they filled in a survey, they would believe that it was useful. When you talk to them about the outcomes of the training, that they would talk about the fact that they found it really useful without you kind of prompting them. They would actually say, you know what, it was really useful. I found that this has improved and this has improved. But also that by the end of the training, you could see that there was a difference in the thing that you were interested in. So that skill that you were aiming to be useful about. Okay, so by triangulating and making sure that you're picking up multiple points of data, you're avoiding the possibility that your bias gets in the way and you are only looking for success in the middle of what you were doing. So I can't emphasize enough that evaluation, while yes, it does tell your boss and your funding bodies that you are amazing, okay, that's not the primary purpose. And I would always shy away from evaluation if that's what you're aiming to do. What you want is information about how to improve what you're doing. So even with this strategy, the combination of numbers around usefulness means that, yep, it was useful when it came to skill number one, two, and three, but number four, they didn't find it particularly useful. Now, the observation, you might find that, hey, that skill they actually didn't improve on. So see how you're getting the same information from both of those pieces of data. And then you might even get a reason why when it comes to your story, to your qualitative. So this kind of approach around your key, um, around your key objectives is a really, really helpful way to map the direction that you want to go for your project. Because even if your project was a success, you're going to get bored out of your mind if you don't keep improving it and people will get bored with it as well. So you'll want to keep improving it and using this data. I hope that's been useful. I know it's a little on the academic side, but evaluation is absolutely central to getting funding. I should have said that at the start, then you would have perked up and been interested. It's central to getting funding if you can verify what you're doing is actually making a difference. It's central to making decisions about the future. So take advantage of these kinds of approaches and really build up your toolbox of evaluations, whether it's building surveys or running focus groups or doing observation. Um, really think about how you can evaluate richly and well, enjoy, go and give it a go.